Hello friends, and welcome to the No Holds Barred Witchcraft podcast. You don't like it when I call them friends. Why Why is that, Chris? You're smiling at me, you're <laughs> sniggering. Is it because I do it in a really creepy way? You do it in a really creepy way. Hello, carry on. hello friends, it's us again, <laughs> your favourite people that you've never actually met. <laughs> Those weirdos from the No Holds Barred Witchcraft podcast and thothwitchcraft.com. If you want to buy some metaphysical sh and don't want to buy it from Amazon because you don't want to give Jeff Bezos any more of your money, then you need to visit thothwitchcraft.com. We have all sorts of stuff that you can just spend ridiculous amounts of money on, but the difference is we'll give you well good crawler sh instead of bad quality sh like you get from Amazon. So there we go. We've fulfilled our obligation to advertise thoughtwitchcraft.com, so I suppose we should talk about tools of the craft. Now, this is a uh, podcast Request episode podcast. that is requested by someone on the secret group. The secret no holds barred Facebook group that I'm not allowed to talk about because it's a secret, so don't tell anyone. Now, what we were asked, because we did an episode called Feisty Witches, where we talked about social media and um, basically Facebook Insta mainly. Witches. Yeah, Facebook witches mainly in Facebook groups. We were asked to do a episode on youtube witches and the youtube occult community so what we've decided to do is to call this episode tools of the crap because of course really they're all tools in every sense of the word <laughs> would you agree chris oh well yeah sure why not i'm trying to think i'm trying to think if it was actually youtube that we were originally planning this name from because as as you probably do, have noticed we always have kind of quippy quippy titles for these quality uh quality podcast time with us i thought we just um, stole them from buffy the vampire slayer episodes and charmed episodes <laughs> some of them we did but we put a lot of thought into how these were going to work i wonder if anyone's um, actually noticed that yet i don't know probably not i, I shouldn't have said anything probably not you, you're, you're giving away tools of the craft now. They're definitely tools. Let's just put it that. Whether or not they're useful tools is the question, really. Um, because there's yeah. so many people on YouTube now, aren't they? It, it really yeah. is a... Um, isn't there, like, just a ridiculous amount of what actually makes up the internet and how much of that is, like, Wikipedia and how much of that is actually YouTube and, and Netflix, how much of those two Netflix things work together? makes up a large proportion of the internet, apparently, nowadays, which is crazy, really, isn't it? Or at least the yeah. stream and the stuff that you actually use from your ISP. So, because, of course, we're going to go into extra time on the Patreon and because I'm very loose-lipped, I'm going to say something extremely rude and probably offend most of the people that we would probably want to work with in the future so therefore <laughs> yeah, exactly. what i suggest we do is start off with the positive things the positive okay. channels that we've got so okay. do you have any that you'd like to point out and explain what you like about them and no you can't do the ask a mortician one because i've already bags it that <laughs> i already I, I knew you were going to say that the other one is i've got to remember what they were called now because it was actually one that was suggested to me by a client okay. um what was that one was it was it something like hoodoo delish or something like that um yeah so we've got a couple of hoodoo ones there's hoodoo delish which was one that a client of yours was very much interested in you know the client yeah. that ended up following a load of youtube videos and then making a mistake f***ing it up basically she f it up because she watched a YouTube yeah. video. Now, back in our day, the students <laughs> and the inexperienced, they'd go and buy a book and try and copy what yeah. the book said and f*** it up. Nowadays, they watch YouTube. YouTube. And it's the YouTube people that we get come to us that have f***ed up spells. And I've said well, come on. up so many times that oh, yeah. I'm going to have to spend ages editing out all of this f***ing yeah, swearing you are. out now. I really yeah. got to stop saying exactly. f*** and 
and can you say <laughs> piss? I don't know if you can say piss. I'm sure you can say that, but you've now gonna literally spend that. All they're gonna get is a a whole ten seconds of bleeping now. Yeah. Um, what I was trying to say, which was a lot more useful, um, was that essentially people do, don't they? If how how do I do this? Oh, I don't remember how to do this. Oh, I'll check if on what YouTube says. Like you don't even buy a book, do you nowadays? You just go. Oh, I need, I, I've never been shown how to how to screw in a light bulb. So what am I going to do? I'm going to ask YouTube. YouTube will know. How do I put so. together flat pack furniture? YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, but it is good. It you does know. work. It does work. But anyway, you're getting away from the point. I don't know what it is with you. You always take us off on a tangent, and I always try and pull us back. Lies. Lies. So Who Do Delish is Do Delish? a YouTube channel, and this is yeah. one that you recommend. And well, it specialises in Who Do on I YouTube. Think... What do you like about it? I, I like... Um, well, one, I like the angles, because... I find far too many of these YouTubers are all about face, 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 aren't they? Um, and actually all they want, you know, they're all playing with their camera angles so that you look at their faces all the time because they're mini celebrities. Whereas actually, what I like about the Who Do Delish one Are you picking on do... mine? Are you picking on my YouTube channel? <laughs> no, I'm not picking on well, your YouTube, our YouTube, YouTube channel. YouTube channel, probably. yeah, Boff TV, because of course that's the best one that's on there. Yeah. Subscribe to exactly. it. We need the help, trust me. <laughs> so that's the that's the kind of reason that I'm that you your face is on there a lot more than mine, is that I don't like it. That's well, a I bit about like it. it. I really don't like. I, I thought that but, I couldn't get away with just filming my hands, but now I've watched the YouTube Delish channel where she does spells and stuff like that. Yeah. You know. You're now thinking, Oh, I could have got away with that for a long time. Well, I am actually, if you've noticed, I am starting to do that with the spell stuff. I'm just doing close ups of what I'm doing. But you know I used to just originally if you look at the old, older ones, it was just me moaning in front of the camera. And not moaning going, Oh moaning as in picking on people that I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas yeah, I quite like I quite like that because one, she explains things in a really nice way, in that I don't, I don't get irritated by her oversimplifying anything. She really does tell you what she needs to tell you, and then she even what you don't see a lot of, which is I think she actually films um, Client actual films. practice. Yeah. So that you know, because she even bleeps out when she uses people names or or things like that. So she'll explain how she's do, going to do it, then she'll you'll, she'll demo how you, how she's doing it as she's doing stuff. And then she'll actually go, you know, um, I think a good example is when she does petition work and she'll like, you know, I want such and such, you know, such and such as person's asked me to do and she'll start writing it or whatever and then she'll bleep out when she's doing the incantation -y part. Well, that's probably the wrong turn to use as it's hoodoo, but you know what I mean? Like the petition -y the bit, bit which you speak out loud. She bleeps yeah, that, that out so you can't tell who She bleeps it is that out that so you can't tell who she's actually whereas doing. Whereas a so... lot of it is kind of staged, isn't it? So yeah. it's not a real spell, whereas she's recording spells that she's doing. Which a lot of people would say you shouldn't do that. So what are your thoughts on that? I'm presuming you don't care. Well, I don't I don't think it... I think with a practice like who do, I don't think it does matter on the basis that everything is purchased and like there's a set choreography that goes Ooh, with it oh you nasty bitch. so no that's not nasty <laughs> you're saying that in... just purchased you're saying that they're all consumerists no, but but they are like <laughs> you don't... heard it here first folks you set me off <laughs> it's what but, i do best <laughs> as you always do but you know what i mean like as in um you know lots of hoodoo practitioners don't make their own stuff they they find a supplier that they really like and it works the way that they want it to work and they use that every time uh, or they, you know, they buy their candles from a certain kind of place because they know the, the smell or the, the how long they take to burn. Like they're very specific about their tools, aren't they? Um, whereas, um, whereas if you were going to go and film like a really private one to one ancestral work with, you know, Aunt Jemima, then I don't feel like that would necessarily you'd want to share that 
with the world in the same way because that's an intimate work i don't know aunt jemima was a right floozy wasn't she she's always trying uh -huh. to get i mean they didn't have cameras in her day but she was always trying to get in there <laughs> she'd love it she, she'd be so, on page three it's page three well, you know still what? a thing <laughs> yeah i think page three it's is great great thing. aunt jemima but yeah she was a right floozy but anyway go on <laughs> but you know what i mean like so i think i think the difference is with that there is a very set so for her the only part that she really won't want to share is the personal bit of somebody's name yeah that's in part of the spell work or a you know, face where they're quite she doesn't show or her a face. face but you know for that i'm kind of like that's work for a client yeah. so showing work for a client for me to a certain extent doesn't bother me if i was doing private work for myself i don't know if i would want that to be recorded yeah but then to be fair you wouldn't see much if you watched us anyway would you because you know we don't rely on tools like certain groups well i don't know i mean i've done a couple of spells and things live on the witchcraft live facebook group like streamed them but they're supposed to be educational well, that's teaching yeah. that's educational right i can kind of, i get that like because but then equally the way in which you teach um and it is which is the same in the sort of ways that i would work is you're not focusing on oh well you need to use this spell like you're going you're talking about you need to focus on what you actually want how do you you know and then helping them get there in a very organic way yeah whereas um whereas a lot of these things are literally you know you need to use this version or you need to use that version okay yeah so you like who do delish so i've I like already said delish. i've technically already said ask a mortician so ask a mortician isn't really technically magical related although one of the recent ones was about um ouija boards and life after death and stuff like that which she doesn't personally believe in but she's a mortician and she talks an awful lot about um the dying process and basically morticians work she believes in you know um greener ways of disposing of corpses essentially and you learn an awful lot of history and things that a lot of people are so scared to ask because you don't really find these answers out which is one of the reasons why in a very very short space of time she's got well over a million subscribers just because she does produce really good content and I've yeah. learned a lot from her. And it's about a subject that people don't like to talk about. Yeah. Death. Yeah. So particularly in the UK. Okay. So is there any others that you like? Um, there are a few, but probably not ones that I would like enough to announce them, if that makes sense. Mm. So they're shame. You're ashamed. To, you're, you're, you like them. Yeah, I say like, I think, well, maybe some of them. Yeah, so, basically. Because like, obviously, I don't want... <laughs> Where I kind of, there are, and I'm not going to mention the W word, but kind of those kind of um, slightly more um, religious in their practice, shall we say. Um, I find watching them interesting. Not enough to you recommend like them. You like to watch them, to take the piss out of them. Not like that, not at all. I'm just interested in kind of how far they're willing to go and, you know, I'm always disappointed by it's not being very far. Well, but, you, you, know, you bought a book by one of them, didn't you? I did you buy a book a by book, one of them, actually. You bought a book by one of them that you thought was rather crap. So you went and bought their book just because it was so ridiculously um, discounted that you thought it was rude not to. Lady Poison, our friend Lady Poison, watched one online, a YouTuber who apparently specialises in traditional witchcraft, who brought out a book... And she tore it to pieces. She thought it was absolute crap. Um, but a lot of these YouTubers now are bringing out books. So, you know. Well, it's all about the merch, isn't it? Like, yeah. That's the big thing about YouTube is it's their influencers that produce merch. So you've got to have their T-shirts and you've got to have their no, postcards no, no, no. and they're, stuff. They're serious witches. Chris. And an they're enamel pins. Witches. Every single one of them has got an enamel pin. Well, we'll get an animal um, pin one day. We're going to have to. We're going to have to. I, it's I'd expected of like us. One. I'd quite like an enamel pin, a Thoth enamel pin. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. They're all. They're Sorry. already offering it us on our Patreon, actually. If oh, you've I noticed. did notice that, yeah. 
OK, so a couple of others then. I suppose I'm going to have to take the lead on the nice ones because, of course, I'm the nice person, whereas Chris yeah. just wants to slate people. So I have Rude. followed a, a couple of people's channels on the Thoff TV YouTube channel, which is our YouTube channel. So you could go there and have a little look. But one that I quite want to I, I want to point out one or two that really stick out to me. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why that is. Um, so one of them that's on there, his name's George Harris, and he's been on there for quite a while. And he's apparently um, kind of folk magic, traditional witchcraft, that kind of thing. Um, and quite interesting. I wouldn't necessarily agree with everything that I've seen him say, and he doesn't get involved. He definitely tries to stay out of any kind of political stuff. But because traditional style witchcraft is now becoming the next big popular thing, it's nice to compare people that have been talking about before it was cool, like George was, because it has kind of one of the earliest um, YouTube channels, which it was all about really traditional witchcraft, and the newer ones. So a lot of the ones that were Wiccan have now turned to traditional witchcraft, but actually it's the same thing. They're just doing the same yeah. thing. They're calling their magic circle, uh, their um, circle with their elements, they just call that a compass now and just say they're practicing traditional witchcraft. But we won't go into that. We're going to carry on with the positives. So that that's a good one. Okay. Quite interesting. Um, so the next one would be uh, Esoterica. So esoteric is quite an interesting one if you're one of these um, people that loves their research. So esoteric is basically mainly short kind of, um, I wouldn't say documentaries, but short lectures by an expert. Um, I think he's a theologian. Okay, a, a, a Jew, no, he's a Jewish mystic. So he's an actual um, scholar. Okay. Uh, but he's all about the famous texts and things like that that you get. So he'll talk a little bit about um, things like the Lesser Key of Solomon. He'll talk about um, Dead Sea Scrolls, that kind of thing. But he talks about it from a scholar's perspective. So okay. there's not a huge amount of magical practice. But it is clearly coming from someone with, you know, he's got a Jewish background in mysticism and he's a scholar. So that's a very, very interesting take on things because it's very much one of those ones where he dots the I's and crosses the T's. And it's all very okay. kind of this is the facts. This is what this is. This is what that is. We don't understand this. We do understand that. That kind of thing, which I do find quite ref refreshing because I think that a lot of the lectures that are given by professors are very often so boring for the everyday person <laughs> or the beginner. So yeah. he does cover things that would interest beginners, but also would interest people that are also, you know, take a more scholarly angle. Um, much like my personal favorite at the moment, whose name I'm going to butcher. So I'm going to put these in the in the uh, description of the podcast so that you can <laughs> just copy and paste. Arif Harger is a Scandinavian uh, archaeologist, and he specialises in tearing apart um, neo-pagan Norse-styled religions. So he'll basically take all of what you think you know about Odin and Loki and all that kind of thing <laughs> and actually tell you, it's actually a load of that was created by Christians. So what I really yeah. like about him is that, A, again, he is a practitioner, but he doesn't talk about his personal work. So everything okay. that he puts on there is all just scholarly stuff or mainly arche okay. archaeological evidence and that kind of thing. But you do get the latest. Um, but he's trying to make the difference between what is Norse and what is actually Anglo-Saxon. Yeah, he he he's he. You'll learn a lot about uh, a lot about Norse um, religion and magical practice and stuff from him because he's just going from what 
the archaeological evidence is. And then every now and then he'll put a little tidbit about his personal practice or beliefs. But he, he very much says, this is my opinion because of such and such. And the thing is, this is so necessary because most of these uh, neo-pagan um, recreational kind of religions, whether it's Asa True or all these kind of Norse witchcraft things, they're all either fake so, and completely different to what the actual, you know, Vikings and pre-Vikings, because he goes into a lot of pre-Viking stuff, which I find fascinating, because you don't find that sort of information anywhere. Um, but if, if you're interested in anything like runes or anything Norse, um, anything like that, then that's a definite one that I really recommend just because you know that it's someone that really has studied it from the archaeological perspective, but also from a practitioner's perspective. And he yeah. makes a very clear divine in line between what archaeological evidence there is to support theories and also where his personal practice is, which you just don't get. No. So, you know, and he's what I I've will learned. check him out. I've learned a lot from him, but he's mainly been because I stumbled across his channel. Um, I can't remember what video I saw, but it basically made me think, oh, this is going to be a load of crap and it. it's going to be the same old person touting the same old crap. And he was basically saying, um, what was it? Oh, it was why Loki is a Christian god. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> things like that. I was like, oh, here we go. This is going to be interesting. But actually, it makes a lot of points that people just don't understand, you know, runes and stuff like that, which people get a lot of false information on. And the reason is, is because most of what you learn about Norse um, when it comes to magical practices is all stuff that's been released by neo-pagans. And yeah. they aren't taking very often a scholarly perspective on it. And unfortunately, they don't seem to take a very practical um, approach. A lot of it can be um, folklore. And I would say... Yeah, uh, a, lot of, a lot of it is baked on... what they call it, yeah. LARPing. Yeah, a lot of it's based... based a lot of it's based on the, the, fo the folklore... And therefore, is actually they're taking bits from stories um, that are there that are <laughs> aren't particularly old either because they're not um, they're not written down. So a lot a lot of it is Anglo-Saxon, where there is this blend of um, the Norse with the um, the Christian saints, and yeah. therefore you know they're starting to starting to blend into what becomes kind of anglo-saxon stuff um and rather than actually this none of it tends to be from channeled work or anything like that that actually suggests there's some real practice going on um tends to be oh well this this encyclopedia on norse mythology um says that that story says oh well therefore they must have done this as a practice and you're just kind of like well not necessarily I suppose with other other parts of the world, like, you know, even to a certain extent with the Egyptian stuff um, and particularly the Greek stuff, because there is um, actual texts about a lot of these things, I mean, you know, and large quantities of text and, and reliable uh, archaeological evidence in order to do a lot of the stories about certain gods and about how they develop. Um, that's missing from a lot of other more oral traditions mm. um well and particularly particularly with the norse it's because the vikings were so um so nomadic it means you're not going to leave lots of, of big stone structures about when you're moving all the time no but quite a lot of the stuff that you do find with um, and again, a lot. I, I don't want to go too much into the Norse thing because we might as well just do a whole podcast devoted to it, actually. But there's a lot of stuff from an archaeological perspective that you dig up, which really makes you have to rethink everything that you think you know about Vikings and that kind of thing. Um, and 
Anyway, so going on to our next YouTuber, and I don't know why you didn't mention this, because I know how you feel about putting the craft back into witchcraft. Christina McConnell. Yeah. Well, I, I suppose I don't really count her as a YouTuber because... She's on YouTube. Her. She's got a massive following on YouTube. She, I know she's she is. She's not a but witch, like, but we really think witch. she should be. She'd make a brilliant She's very witch. cool. Yeah. If she you want really inspiration... Cool. For your craft, then go on Netflix. <laughs> go on Netflix and look at. I think what is it? The like Curious um, Creations of Christine Creations. McConnell. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. she she's brilliant. She's an artist basically, but she has a kind of witchy aesthetic. And because we all know the witchcraft these days is just about the aesthetic, not actually about the magic, don't we? At least that's what yeah. I get the impression from YouTube anyway. Yeah, but the thing is like. She doesn't have an aesthetic that annoys me. Mm. Like, because she's not gothy. Like, she's spooky. Yeah. It's probably a really good word for her. But actually, like, you know, she macabre. genuinely has... She's macabre. got a kind, of, yeah. a kind of macabre... A clean macabreness about it. She's basically... Uh, the, uh, to see how you like this description, then. Um, I feel like she's the Disney version... Of Ask a Mortician. <laughs> like, if, if Disney were to do a cartoon about yeah. Ask the Mortician, that's who you'd get. Chris. Probably. <laughs> you'd get her. Yeah. Um, no, I thought you were actually going to talk about a different one then, because it's one of those that kind of not... I don't hate her at all. She's fab. And even though she is related to the W word, I do actually like sort of, sort of some of the things she says. Um, and that's that's the one Mooney, which I'm sure you're going to expect weren't going to expect me to bring her up. But I think we'll talk about her in the Patreon section, <laughs> because before we get to the Patreon section, I've got to put a mention out to the Dorset Wildlife Rescue. Now, that's one that we follow on there. Now, you'd have thought that Dorset Wildlife Rescue would be all about kind of hippies and stuff like that. And to be fair, the main person that's on there, who is a traditional witch, um, is, I suppose you'd call, you know, that kind of... They'd, they'd be, like, classed as a hippie, you know, all of the kind of... Um, that kind of a movement, that kind of a thing. Very liberal, very lefty. Um but there's an awful lot of magical information on there that is in plain sight that I don't know how he gets away with putting on there. There's one labelled flying ointments where he actually shows you how to make a flying ointment and not these crappy ones that you buy online, like a, a proper one. One that <laughs> Lady Poison would be proud of. In fact, it was Lady Poison that told me about this YouTube channel. Oh, wow. Um, and there's quite a lot of various different bits and pieces on there. So if you're into potions making and you don't want to buy all these crappy Llewellyn books on formularies and stuff that don't <laughs> give you any real information, then check out yeah. Dorset Wildlife Rescue. Now, there's only a couple of potions and things like that that are on there. And I'm not saying that I would use them and I'm not telling you to make them at home because I'm sure that in most places they're highly illegal to me and very poisonous and extremely poisonous <laughs> and i'm not saying that i agree with all the information on there however it is extremely apparent from my perspective the perspective of an actual practitioner that this person lives and breathes what they do and that everything that all the information that they're giving you is from personal gnosis and from personal yeah. experience this is someone that experiments so this is one of those little things that you want to find online. You want to find legitimate craft, a little peek into someone else's practice. And this is something that you really will not find in many mainstream, if there's such a thing as mainstream occult publishers. You won't find books published by Wiser on this kind of thing. You won't find them from Llewellyn. No. This is a very small channel. It's been going for many, many years, and it's only got about a thousand subscribers, partly because it's one of those things that you, to find these videos, you really need to know what you're talking about. 
in order to put not in a search box. not like ours. It's not clickbaity like ours. He's clearly put the information out for specific people to find. And that's it for this week's episode.